Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. XRP for the win, my friends. I tell you, I've been holding XRP since November of 2017. I've heard pretty much every argument conceivable as to why it doesn't make sense for financial institutions, including banks, to utilize XRP as a bridge currency. I've heard all of the arguments. But why would why would why would anyone any bank want to use XRP when they can just create their own cryptocurrency? Or why not use stable coins? And there are so many reasons why that does not make logical sense. Because you're not getting at the core issue of trust if you're talking about a bank coin or a stable coin. There's counterparty risk right there. Utilizing an, a, a cryptocurrency that's sufficiently decentralized, sufficiently technologically advanced, and has an open market price, if you use that type of cryptocurrency, then you're accounting for trust factors that otherwise are not addressed. And so what do you know? Goldman Sachs seems to have finally figured this out. Look at this headline from Bloomberg. Goldman Sachs says, don't look for its stable coin anytime soon. So I'm going to share with you a little bit of the background on this, what they had to say, which is brief. And then I'm going to use the words of Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO, uh, to tear apart this entire, entirely nonsensical argument in favor of any sort of bank coin. And, and it goes back to something that he posted over five years ago. It was just as true then as it is today. But before going further, I do want to be clear that I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun, damn it. Here's a headline from Coindesk first, just to set the table, get sufficient background information. And uh, Goldman Sachs granted Settlecoin cryptocurrency patent. This is an old article. It's from July 13th, 2017. And I only need to cover the very top part of the article. I just want to make sure you're aware of the background of this. Investment bank Goldman Sachs has been awarded a patent for its proposed Settlecoin cryptocurrency settlement system. Let me pause right there and just mention, um, one of the things envisioned for this was basically it to be used as a bridge from bank to bank. Uh, it's similar, conceptually, to how XRP would be used, but of course, you're talking about a walled garden that not everybody will end up participating in for reasons we'll get to a little bit later in this video, but I just wanted to mention the Settlecoin, the vision for it, uh, Goldman Sachs Settlecoin, that's their bank coin, that, well, that was essentially a big part of the vision of it. And then the article proceeds. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office published Goldman's patent on July 11th entitled Cryptographic Currency for Securities Settlement. The bank made headlines when the existence of the patent application was revealed in late 2015. And there may have been other visions in terms of what it could use around, but the, move around, but the point is it would be a closed network and the Settlecoin, Goldman Sachs Settlecoin, would be the bridge from, from, from bank to bank, right? Um, and so then there's this uh, from January 27th, so just a few days ago, uh, again titled, this is from Bloomberg, titled, Goldman Sachs says don't look for its stable coin anytime soon. And mind you, again, they had been planning on this publicly since 2015, so maybe they were even thinking about it before that. But in 2015, that's when we found out that they were they were uh, applying for the patent, which they ended up getting approved for a couple years later. And now we find out that they're basically going to scrap it. And it's been seven years since uh, word of this got up publicly. Seven years later, like, oh, yeah, well, looks like that's not going to work. Um, and so they, they, they're not throwing out, you'll see here, they're not throwing out a possibility for the utilization of stable coins. But again, it's not a global solution. And I'm not, and you'll see as I go through, like, I'm not saying that you can't have walled gardens have some sort of, sustained success but it's not a global solution and you still will there will still absolutely be a need to have a, a jurisdictionally neutral cryptocurrency that's decentralized to connect networks that otherwise would not interoperate so anyway the, this article reads as follows goldman sachs group inc said that while it's exploring creating a stablecoin with partners the introduction of a digital currency if any remain remains a ways off and here's a quote from uh, Maeve Du Valley with Goldman Sachs. We have no immediate intention of creating a Goldman Sachs coin. We continue to see value working closely with private institutions looking to create a ubiquitous stable coin that meets legal and regulatory requirements and has transparent governance. 
And uh, so the bank, then they note the bank didn't disclose the names of the firm. So I suspect that part of this is they, um, they're concerned about the legal implications of creating the coin. So maybe even that's enough to get them to prevent it. But they still do seem to see some sort of utility utilizing a stable coin as a bridge. But you'll see, as <laughs> what the rest of the video is dedicated to covering, why that's a stupid idea. Because whether you're talking about a bank coin or you're talking about a stable coin, uh, it doesn't matter. The same, it has the same fundamental flaws. Counterparty risk. It doesn't matter what it is. Because, because functionally, it's the same damn thing. From a, from a conceptual perspective, it's the same thing whether you call it a bank coin or a stable coin. Because listen, a bank coin, it is a stable coin. It's just not being traded on open markets. The stable coin is traded on open markets. And so it's allegedly backed by whatever fiat currency underlies it. And so a bank coin, yeah, fine. So it's not being traded. But it, so what's it backed by? Well, it's backed by the banks that are participating within the network, right? So it's always going to have the same value. So it still has the same fundamental problem, counterparty risk. So now take a look at this. This is the piece from Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse titled The Case Against Bank Coin. And he published this on LinkedIn on August 24th, 2016. Over, you know, so about five and a half years ago. It's just as true today as it was back then. And he shreds the concept and Goldman Sachs... Perhaps they're finally getting it, although if they're still saying, hey, maybe stable coins make sense, maybe they're just keeping their options open. Because look, I, I, and I admit this, you could have some, some small networks develop, and even if they're big banks, you could have big banks create small networks. And I say small networks because there are over 11,000 financial institutions. Even if you're the biggest of banks, you're not going to get the bulk of, uh, of financial institutions in your little walled garden. No, come use ours, because uh, what do you think's going to happen? Well, that's when I'm going to go through this piece here. But... Uh, you could still get some sort of traction. And so maybe they're just keeping their options open. If something starts to take hold and they can participate in this or that, but it's not a global solution. There's still a need for XRP. So anyway, Brad Garlinghouse's piece reads as follows. Uh, UBS, Deutsche Bank, Santander, and BNY Mellon announced their utility settlement coin, a new digital asset they hope will become the industry standard for blockchain settlements. They expect banks will initially use the coin for post-trade settlement by, and clearing by early 2018. <laughs> yeah, how about that work out? Uh, after they secure blessings, a blessing from regulators and central banks. While this development signals significant market traction for an institutional use of digital assets, I have to say it's deeply misguided. A bank-issued digital asset can only really efficiently settle between the banks who issued it. Then, two scenarios can play out. Scenario one, all banks around the world put aside competitive and geopolitical differences, adopt the same digital asset, ag agree on its rules, and harmoniously govern its usage. Fat chance. So think, let me pause. Think about this. The odds of that happening are about a sa the same as the odds of all roughly 200 nations on the entire planet agreeing to use the same fiat currency. And then who's in charge of it? Who's it benefits? This and that. There are geopolitical differences. No, it's not going to happen. You know, why would you want to uh, put the, all your eggs in one basket of, of some sort of bank coin that's backed by uh, maybe just the, the largest banks that initiated it? And then what's that do in terms of their control over you if you're on another the other side of the planet? Like a geopolitical concerns? Like well, what does that do? Why, what's the incentive? There is no incentive. Not really. I mean, we can get a few few people to participate, but there's going to be no shortage of individual financial institutions that will say, no, why would I want to take on this counterparty risk? Why would I associate? Like, what's the purpose of this? Right? It's not going to happen. So that's why when, when Brad Garlinghouse writes, you can only efficiently settle between the banks who issue it. Yes, exactly. That's a walled garden. The banks that signed up, and it'll probably just be a small number, if any sort of uh, a little circle like this ever, ever gets adopted to any degree, it'll be a handful of banks, whatever that means. And then, yes, they can efficiently settle because they agree that it's worth, uh, that this bank is, or the, the, the whatever bank coin is worth, and it's it's backed by the banks, and then you can quickly settle. O okay, fine, fine. Not a global solution. So, again, scenario one, Brad Garlinghouse wrote, all banks around the world put aside competitive and geopolitical differences, adopt the same digital asset, agree on its rules, and harmoniously govern its usage. Fat chance. Yeah, no kid. That sounds like a fantasy land. It ain't happening. Scenario two. The more likely scenario, banks not in the issuing group issue their own digital assets with their own sets of rules and governance. 
We're kind of seeing this already, as the Financial Times points out, with Citi's City Coin and Goldman Sachs Settle Coin. So there you go. That's the one that I referenced at the beginning of the video, the Settle Coin, which Goldman made public in 2015 that they were going for it, applying for the patent. They got approved for the patent. Now they're not doing anything with the patent. They're, 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 they have no intention of doing anything like this anytime soon, which means it's probably never going to happen. That would be my guess. It could but not likely to occur. It looks like it's pretty clear they want to go down a different path if they're going to do anything, which would involve stable coins and less liability from a legal perspective for them. That would be my guess anyway. Anyway, Brad Garlinghouse continues now. Uh, the result would be an even more fragmented currency landscape than what we have today. If banks of di different digital asset groups want to settle trades with one another, they'll have to make markets between their unique digital assets or trade between their digital assets and a common fiat currency. What a mess. So think about what that means. Why is XRP useful as a bridge currency? Well, in a, in a world where XRP is globally adopted, and at least to this point, it certainly has, um, it, it, like, what, what does it mean if you're, if you like, say you're, um, you hold the Thai bot and then, you know, you want to convert to the, you know, the, the Mexican pay, pay, pick your fiat currency. I don't care what it is, especially for more exotic currencies. There aren't direct markets for them. And so if you have XRP globally adopted and you just, if you just have it traded on one exchange in each country on the planet, there you go. Even that would be sufficient. Even that would be sufficient to say so you wouldn't need additional hops along the way. And then the path in terms of settlement, actually moving the money around. you wouldn't need the, the intermediaries, this bilateral chain of uh, banking arrangements. You, you wouldn't need that. But you don't, you won't necessarily, for, especially for the more exotic currencies, there's not going to be markets made for every currency on the planet. There are too many of them. And for every asset on the planet, it's not going to happen. And so that's why none of this makes any damn sense. Right? It definitely doesn't make a damn bit of sense. And then Brad continues. The second big problem with the utility settlement coin is it seems it'll be backed by a basket of currencies. Once backed by cash, it's no longer an asset. It's a liability. Trading liabilities then ultimately requires moving cash across borders, recreating today's system, but adding more friction. Yeah, ain't that the truth? We strongly believe banks need an independent digital asset to enable truly efficient settlement, and we believe XRP is best positioned for that role. It goes back to the fundamentals of what makes digital assets unique and special. They're universal currencies, meaning anyone can use them as units of value anywhere in the world. That universality gives digital assets global reach and the ability to settle much faster than traditional assets. Yes, yeah, so let me pause to point out the importance of this. There's no counterparty risk. XRP is worth whatever global market participants decide it's worth. Whatever they're willing to buy and sell it for, that is what it's worth in that moment. It's not backed by anything. And, and so if that sounds scary to you, I encourage you to rethink that. The fact that it's not backed by anything. It's backed by confidence, people. You know, if anything, if you're going to say it's backed by anything. Because think about it. Like, what, what's the United States dollar backed by? Uh, what's that phrase I always hear? I might butcher it. You know, it's, uh, it's not coming to mind. It's something like, it's a stupid response. Uh, the, the United States dollar is backed by the full faith and confidence of the Federal Reserve, something like this. Which is a fancy way of saying it's backed literally by nothing. It's backed literally by nothing. And even when the United States dollar was backed by gold, oh, okay, it's backed by gold, the, the global market price of gold. How about that? What's gold backed by? Nothing. It's backed, it's backed, gold, gold has a market price that is made up <clears throat> by, by speculators, buyers and sellers. That's true of XRP also. XRP is worth whatever speculators say it's worth. Gold is worth whatever speculators say it's worth. That's it. There's not counterparty risk. There's no central authority backing it deciding what it's worth that can control it or anything like that. That's the value of this. That's why bank coins don't freaking work for this particular use case. Right? And then Brad writes, <clears throat> um, compared head to head with other independent digital assets like Bitcoin or Ether, XRP settles the most efficiently cross-border in just seconds. In fact, we've run tests with, glo <clears throat> with global banks to prove XRP can lower liquidity costs for cross-border trades. More to come on that front. Yeah, and so now we, we know what's happened because it's been five and a half years. Uh, XRP is, is adopted today. It is adopted uh, as a bridge currency. Now, it, it's, it's not, and it has been globally adopted, but only on a small scale. I say global, it's because there's all sorts of nations around the world that are using it, but there are only a handful of corridors open and happy to acknowledge that. It's a new technology. 
And it, it, it doesn't happen overnight, but it's solving real problems for real people. It's the only solution that humans have devised for the train wreck that is the world of global cross-border payments and settlement. It's the only solution. Because look, people are already trading XRP in markets the world over. It's not backed by anything, which is key because then you don't have to worry about geopolitical differences. You don't have to worry about any of that. It's not backed by anything other than what humans say that it's worth. That is a key function, and it's technologically sufficient. It settles in three to five seconds on-chain, layer one technology. All of this is of critical importance. It has an open market price. Right? So given this is the case, what do you think is going to happen? Given that there's real-world utility, it's going. I think that XRP, unless something way comes out of left field that none of us have fathomed, XRP will continue to be adopted for this use case. And there are other use cases for it as well, but what do you think that will mean for the price of XRP as crypto markets mature? I think money flows into those cryptocurrencies where real problems are being solved over the long haul. Today, in 2022, people do not, speculators do not sufficiently value uh, cryptocurrencies based on fundamentals. They don't. And, and the price reflects that. The price, but primarily anyway, the price reflects that the market moves in tandem, but it won't always be like that. And so as long as XRP continues to be useful, I, I'm speculating that XRP will be worth substantially more in the future, even though there's no way to know that for sure. There's no way to know. But the markets are moving in tandem today, certainly, and uh, the crypto asset class is getting bigger. I, I think that's a trend that's going to continue despite future bear markets, which undoubtedly will occur. It's still going to be here. It's not going away. That's why I believe that there's an opportunity for life-changing wealth here. Not specifically because of one use case with one cryptocurrency. I'm speaking more broadly here. But this is an important factor. Ripple, admittedly, is a huge player in the space, an important player, very important player within the XRP ecosystem, but there are others as well. And it's XRP is just blazing fast. There's all sorts of incredible attributes. So anyway, that's the way that I'm looking at it, and that's why I wanted to highlight this. But this bank coin argument, it's garbage. You know, people that argue that, what I find typically when I, I see people arguing this, you see it on social media all the time, they haven't sufficiently thought through the nuts and bolts of what tr what a transaction would look like specifically with it, and the reason that banks and financial institutions, broadly speaking, would or would not want to adopt a bank coin. They haven't thought through all of it, and they're just thinking, yeah, but why not? Well, exactly, right. Ask the next question, right? Ask the question after that. Go on. Feel like go got to go a little bit further down the thought process before arriving at such a firm conclusion that bank coins and stable coins are a solution rather than XRP because you're not getting to the heart of it, and at the heart of all of it is trust. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.